ladies and gentlemen, tonight, in honor of the 10th anniversary of the Happy Alliance of Dr. Lee A. Bridge and Caltech, we are going to dramatize for you a crucial episode in the life of our president. In fact, a crucial episode in the lives of most of us here. Now, it so happens that Dr. DeBritt wasn't actually present at this crucial episode in his life. But this is not so strange. Men are often absent when their destinies are being decided, when the draft board selects their numbers and some girl makes up her mind to marry them or when their parents get got them. <laughs> but enough of this philosophical chit chat. At Caltech, crucial episodes have a way of taking place at meetings of the Board of Trustees. <laughs> and so it was back in 1946, when the Board, at an epic meeting, made the wisest decision in its history to offer the presidency to Lee DeBridge. We transport you now through 10 years of time and 200 yards of space in order to let you see how it all happened. The time is 1946. The place, the boardroom, and true call, the character, and we use the term dramatic. <laughs> the trustees of the Institute are unreasonable facsimiles. <laughs> As we arrive on the scene, they are about to open their meeting with their famous theme song, We Trust. <laughs> in this college of technology, a fact for which we make no explanation or apology. But when we say we're trusting, the word needs readjusting. It doesn't mean we're trusted. It means we're oh so trusting. We trust in the luck and skill of Dr. Gil McKen. We trust that his 50 million volt won't hit the man. We trust that Dr. Brown won't take it out to ground. Poison wells or fire shells to cut the population down. We trust that our tricky swinging won't shoot down the moon. We trust that Martin Schmidt will save us pretty soon. So you see, we must be the world's most trusting trustee. We trust and trust and trust and trust. Now we trust that Yeltsin Finance won't make us total wrecks. We trust that associates will send substantial wrecks. The Herbert H.G. Nash won't misinvest our cash. The bonds and stocks won't hit the rocks and bring the place down with a crash. We trust that the government won't take the grants away. We trust that the faculty won't dream for higher pay. So we're up and trusting. It's up to be a trustee. We trust and trust and trust and trust. We trust that professors won't express excessive views. We trust not to read their private scandals in the news. We shudder when we meet a new boy in the street. And if you think we're maladjusted, you should see the guy we trust. We are matter where we begin to convalesce. Not what we receive another body from the press. We're not disgusted, our trust is never busted, as dusty, lusty, crusty, rusty, dusty, 
Mr. Chairman, I move that we save the lantern slide lecture for the next meeting of the women's club. Second. <laughs> Second, the motion. Let's say farewell to Sonny Costa del Fuego and get down to business. Very well, then. Um, I'd like to say then right at the start that all of the prospects uh, you gentlemen asked me to call on were very superior men. I always said old Harry had no discrimination. I disremember who you were going to call on. Can we review that, please? Uh, well, there was the retired general. No general. They don't laugh. And there was the ex-government official. Government? Ex-government? Uh-uh. Well, then there was the president of United Copper and Coke. Uh-huh. Now we're talking. And however, there was a little misunderstanding there. In what way? Well, uh, when we went over the budget figures together, I had to point out to him that the figure that he thought was his uh, monthly personal expense account was actually the annual salary we were offering. So he turned you down? Well, I wouldn't say that, but he had me thrown out in the street. Good. We can't handle any more hot tempers around here anyway. Gentlemen, it's as I see say. The qualifications for this job are perfectly simple and straightforward. All we really want is a financier, businessman, scholar, preacher, financier, scientist, diplomat, politician, administrator, financier, <laughs> and uh, YMCA secretary. Gentlemen, I have such a man, Dr. Lee DeBridge. What did you say that name was? Lee Dubridge. Lee A. Dubridge. Oh. What's the A stand for? Uh, Alvin. Alvin? <laughs> Don't blame me. I didn't name him. Well, what do we care what his name is? Does he have all his qualifications? He does. He has the qualifications and then some. Now, uh, if you want an administrator, well, that's Lee Dubridge. All during the war, he was the director of the MIT Radiation Laboratory. Radiation? Uh-uh, let's not fool around with that stuff. Of, of course, you know uh, that was the famous wartime radar development project. Radio? What's he doing in radio? All the live wires are getting into TV. <laughs> and... And uh, before that, Dr. Bridge spent 10 years at the University of Rochester as professor of physics, as the chairman of the physics department, and finally as dean of the faculty. Well, dean, eh? That's very good training. Very, very smooth, these deans. <laughs> Somehow, they always seem to know how to look at you as if they're listening to you. <laughs> Even when you're not talking. <laughs> yeah, there, there, they're impressive, all right. I like the way they look you straight in the eye and give you good, firm handshakes so you won't notice they've forgotten your name. That's good, but what worries me is the student. How do you suppose you'll get along with them? Well, who worries about students at Caltech? <laughs> Are there students here, too? 
Don't give it a thought. The bridge will have no problems at all with the student. Why, the average Caltech student is a happy, well-adjusted, outgoing, mature personality. Uh, how's that again? <laughs> I said the average Caltech student is a happy, well-adjusted, outgoing, mature personality. Who told you that? Why, it says so in the Caltech catalog. Oh, the Caltech catalog, why, man, in the immoral words of Harvey Eagleson, the Caltech catalog is the greatest work of science fiction since Jules Verne. <laughs> Did you, ever, did you ever see one of those guys? What guy? Jules Verne? No, no, no. Caltech student. Wait a minute. I'll step out in the hall and bring in the first two or three I can find. Maybe they can tell you how it really is. In every generation, there are some who save the nation. With our selfless dedication, sacrifice, and industry, a few devoted souls must see that science really rose, and we will turn ourselves to trolls to keep the country rich and free. For the sake, for the sake of the republic, for the sake, for the sake, we'll come and we'll come and we'll, we will take the out of science. Grinding down our noses at the every wheel for the camp, for the comfort of the nation. We will live through misery, and although we all been ruined, we know someone has to do it for the sake of the republic. Only get well hounded and exceedingly well pounded by a fearsome faculty. They take us when we're plastic, and they drive us till we're spastic, till we vibrate like elastic at the drastic frequency. For the day, for the day of the republic, for the day, for the day, the common wheel, we will take. For the safety of the day of the nation, we will stay our sanity. We're a band of young neurotics who will gladly be psychotic for the sake of the republic. So very, very much impressed when people tell us what great geniuses we'll be. We see through all the chatter, and we know they only flatter just to sell us on the servitude at noble CIT. For the sake, for the sake of the republic, for the sake, for the sake of the common weal, common weal. burning down the palm trees on California Street. Oh, happy day. Why, it wouldn't even surprise me if they made off of one of those government airplanes. Now, now that's more like it. The students will be so well adjusted, they'll be almost unendurable. 
What did you say that man's name was? Dubridge. Lee A. Dubridge. Say, uh, do you think this Dubridge can do anything for the graduate students? Now, let's not be ridiculous. <laughs> nobody, nobody can do anything for the graduate students. You're right. What worries me is the faculty. I can't see why we have men like Benny Off and Campbell, Michael Sorensen, Lacey Swift, Hugh Larson, Smythe, King, and Jones. As I said, what worries me is the faculty. <laughs> I think I see what you mean. Still, I wouldn't worry. Bill Bridge would have Ernest Watson to help him. But Ernest Watson's a bachelor. What's that got to do with Well... No bachelor can possibly understand the real problems of faculty life. No marriage, no problem. Cheer up, though. Man can't defy probability forever. <laughs> the math department's betting 15 to 1 that Watson will be married within eight years. What kind of odds are they giving on Don Clark? No. <laughs> now, let's, now let's not change the subject. The question before this meeting is, can Dr. DuBridge get along with the Caltech faculty? And I say he can. What makes you say that? Well, um, for one thing, he talks their language. You mean he's unintelligible? <laughs> no, I mean, um... Uh, he comes from the same background. Uh, he's been through the same mill. You mean he's been ground down? <laughs> no. No, no, you know what I mean. Uh, he has the faculty troubles at heart. And they're the very worst kind. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I can think of words. Name one. Well, there's buildings and grounds. <laughs> Say, where does this what's-his-name stand on ice plant? Buildings and grounds are no problem. What I'd like to know is, can this fellow to bridge stand a daily dose of Officer Newton's jokes? <laughs> I'm sure he can. I'm sure he can. Gentlemen, why don't we stop beating about the bush and get down to the real question? I guess you have something there. All right. How about it? Uh, how, how about what? Can the bridge raise money? Oh. <laughs> Oh, he can, he can. I've never seen anything like it. You remember that extra thousand dollars you gave me for expense money? Don't tell me. Yes, it's true. Two bridge has it now. Just how did that happen? Well, I don't know exactly. Um, he began to talk about some research problem, and suddenly I got all choked up inside. The next thing I knew, he had the money, and I had the warm feeling that I'd promoted science. <laughs> what did you say that man's name was? Dubridge. Lee A. Dubridge. And another thing, he's not only good, he's also incredibly lucky. I tell you what I'll bet. I'll bet that if we hire Dubridge, within 10 years, Caltech will strike oil. <laughs> That's fine. He sounds like our man, all right. Uh, there's one thing else I'd like to know, though. How's his stomach? What do you mean, how's his stomach? Well, you know what I mean. Unless he has the digestion of a goat, he'll never survive the banquet. <laughs> I am I'm sure his suggestion's all right. But, gentlemen, it's more complicated than that. If he has the slightest tendency toward ulcers, he can never handle the job. Why, at Caltech, we average 10 crises a week. Oh, that's not a problem anymore. It isn't? No, haven't you heard they're developing a new drug now? It's specific for college presidents. It's going to be marketed under the name uh, Calabar Equinil and Milltown. Does it work? Of course it works. 
One of our professors has been trying it out. Hey, let's take a look at this job. Once I quit a thousand times a day, full of fears, delusions, and dismay, then they gave me tranquilizing pills, guaranteed to cure all neural ills, and now I'm tranquil. Nothing bothers me, I'm tranquil. Comes a light, lays another mill down. I just shrug, take another mill down. Tranquil, tranquil, full of peace and equanil. I'm immune to fuss and flurry. I've forgotten how to worry with my tranquil. Yesterday, they pulled me from a wreck. Half my axle wound around my neck. When the doctor asked me, are you dead? I just sighed and tried to shake my head and said, I'm tranquil. Nothing bothers me, I'm tranquil. Backbone crack, ambulance is thrown down. I run that, take another mill town. Tranquil, tranquil, for a piece of that one mill. I can hear my pelvis shatter. But it really doesn't matter with my tranquil Lovely thing was clinging to my chest, melting all the buttons off my vest. She said, darling, listen to my plan. I just smiled and disengaged her hand and said, I'm tranquil, tranquil, nothing bothers me, I'm tranquil. I'm a blonde, shaken in the thrill gown, I just yawned, take another mill down. But you can't expect much passion with my Let her in. We can't be any more confused than we are now. Nice idea you had a few minutes ago. You come and give us the last inside next Forgive us, we're so naive. And I want to assure you 
that the Caltech Women's Club is 100% behind your decision to hire Dr. Lee Dubois. But, but we haven't made the decision yet. We don't know whether we're going to offer him the job or not. <laughs> No, of course you don't know. At Caltech, trustees are always the last to know. <laughs> but I assure you, you will make this decision. It is inevitable. What makes you say that? Well, for one thing, Dr. Dubridge is blonde, about five feet nine, with blue eyes, a charming smile, and just a hint of the dimple in his left that's very, very interesting. <laughs> Do you suggest we hire him just because he's handsome? Oh, Kevin, no. At Caltech, handsome men are a dime a dozen. <laughs> we already have Fred Benball, Dick John, Roger Stanton, Dick Mayer. I think I'm going to be ill. I only make the point because Dr. DeVitt will look so sweet giving up the diploma. No, there are certainly more important reasons for hiring him. Well, I should hope so. And the most important reason is Mrs. DeVitt. Mm, his wife? <laughs> Why, certainly. The only sensible way of selecting college presidents is to check on their wives. You know, I think she has a point. It's perfectly obvious. No man is any better than his wife. <laughs> and you are half as good. <laughs> you will be glad to know that Mrs. Seabridge is one of the best. And uh, how do you know that? Oh, we have a full report from our Rochester informant. Your Rochester informant? Why, yes. The Caltech Women's Club has connections on every campus in the United States. Our Rochester agents are especially active. Now, there's a frightening thought. Oh, yes, it is frightening sometimes, especially when one knows the agent. Some of the girls I regret to say are exceedingly fast tongued. Sometimes I think they would cut Whistler's poor old mother to ribbons. And, and they approve of Mrs. Dubridge? They do, they do. Which is the same thing as saying she could charm the venom out of a cobra. But we don't have any cobras at all. I like you. You're sweet. <laughs> now then, where was I? Uh, oh, yes. Um, in addition to being charming, Mrs. Dubridge has the other aspect. For instance, she collects interesting people the way some women collect doctor bills. Why? I wouldn't be surprised if someday she brought Terry Cooper to the campus. Terry who? And she has a special touch with graduate students and their wives and new members of the faculty. She makes everyone feel right at home. And uh, how is she with eccentric science? Oh, no ball is too odd for Doris to do. <laughs> And, uh, and how is she with trustees? As I said. <laughs> well, let's get to the heart of the matter now. How is she on receiving line? Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. When other women have lost all circulation in the legs, and strong men have fainted, Mrs. Dubridge still has a firm hand face. <laughs> Say no more, you have convinced us. Do you think this what's-his-name deserves a wife like that? 
Oh, certainly not. This is what man does. The point is, Dr. Dubridge comes closer than most. And I haven't even mentioned his strongest personal qualifications. And uh, what in heaven's name is that? He understands women. <laughs> he what? <laughs> he understands women. I wish he'd explain them to me. No, no, you misunderstand me. Let me put it this way. What is the most important problem at Caltech? Money. Oh, silly boy. The most important problem at Caltech is that the wives never know what their husbands are doing. Listen, at Caltech, we're lucky if the husbands know what they're doing. <laughs> No reason why the wives should know more than the trustees. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm serious. I know one woman who thought for years her husband was hiding from the police. And it turned out all along he was making observations on Mount Wilson. Well, why don't you ask them what they're doing? My dear sir, Caltech professors never listen to their wives. They switch off their antennae. And when they do reply, their answers never make sense. You can say that again. <laughs> and you think this uh, fellow the bridge can explain everything the wives want to know? Oh, I certainly do. I believe he could explain quantum mechanics to Elvis Presley. <laughs> Did your Rochester operatives tell you that too? Oh no. In a matter as important as this, we wouldn't trust operatives. Well, we sent out our own committee to observe him. As a matter of fact, the girls are outside now if you care to hear their report. By all means, bring them in. Girls! <laughs>
settles it. Let's offer the man a contract. I agree. We'll never find a better man for the job. That's, That's right. right. Are we agreed then, gentlemen? Uh, I agree, all right, but I'm afraid there's a fatal flaw in all this. There is. What is it? Well, any man as bright as this fellow to bridge is going to be much too bright to take the job. That's right, only a masochist would think of it. I guess we'll have to get some general after all. I think I'll reserve. Now, just a minute, gentlemen, just a minute. Don't give up yet. Dr. DeBridge has one weakness I haven't told you about. And now it comes out. Yes. You see, uh, Dr. DeBridge is a man with a mission. He has a passion for science. Now, I know this is going to sound silly to you, but he believes it's his duty to encourage scientific research. Why, when I told him about the opportunities here at Caltech, uh, his eyes lit up like a pinball machine. I have a friend who feels that way about chorus girls. <laughs> let me let let me be sure I understand you. You mean that the bridge is the sort of suave zealot? That's it exactly. That's it exactly. And I'm sure he'll take the position. Good Lord, we're saved. And yet. I hate to take advantage of a man's weakness to stab him with a job like this. Oh, come, come. If you have scruples, you should never have become a trustee. <laughs> let's, let's get this to Bridge first. We can feel sorry for him afterwards. You're probably right. All right. All those in favor of offering him the job, stay on. Aye. Aye. That name is Dubridge. Lee A. Dubridge. Things are getting better around here already. Shall we make a public announcement? We might as well. If we don't, the women's club will. Very well. Bring everybody in. Why, they're already in. Now the search is over, we have found ourselves a president. Joy and comfort fill the heart of every Caltech resident. Our future's full of clover, our vests with pride are busting. Lee, we know, can run the show, and we can go on the show. We trust every tech professor, student, and trustee. We trust we can hand our messy problems all to Lee. We trust that we can back our troubles on his back. That life and you, he'll save the school and lead us from each cold attack. We trust. That Doris can endure us for a spell. We trust that you love us not too wisely, but too well. Now we say and justly, we all praise and trustly, devotedly in Lee, we trust. Drummer? 
If you want your thoughts computered, you must be resolutely tutored and learn the basic language of machines. Non-ambiguous, non-ambivalent translates to a math equivalent, always says exactly what it means. More than all the rest, we like Fortran best. Fortran, Fortran, we all talk Fortran. Others only write the language we say it. Fortran, Fortran, if you talk Fortran, come along and let me hear you convey. Talk for